Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to make a Let's Play. In this video I will demonstrate how to create videos for a Let's Play. This isn't a definitive guide or anything, I'm sure there are many uh, alternative methods. This is however my method and I hope it will be of use to someone. I'll be using several different applications in this video and I will put links to all of them in the description. The first thing you have to do of course is record your game. There are many different uh, screen capture applications you can use, and which one you should use depends on what game you're playing. For 3D games, I find the best option is Fraps, which is this. Uh, I used Fraps for Uru and Myst 5. I record at 30 frames per second and full size. I recommend using a screen resolution of 1280 by 720 for the game while recording. If the game doesn't support widescreen, uh, I recommend using 1280 by 960. Otherwise, just use the highest possible uh, resolution for the game. Although Fraps can record multi-channel sound, there's not really much, po much point to doing this. It'll make editing the audio much more complicated, and YouTube doesn't currently support it anyway, so just stick with stereo. Fraps doesn't uh, compress much while it's recording, so its capture files get very big, easily 10 to 15 gigabytes for each 10 minute video, depending on the resolution you're using. So make sure you have plenty of disk space. If you're, um, if you're recording an older non-3D game, you'll need something else. Options include Cam Studio, which is free, or Hypercam, which is not. I used Hypercam for my Riven videos. If you're playing an old DOS game and you play it using DOSBox, you can use DOSBox's built-in recording functionality which is what I did for Star Trek The Next Generation of Final Unity. The rest of this tutorial assumes video is recorded with Fraps, but most of the procedure is the same in any case. You'll also want to record your narration, and you'll want to record it live while you're playing the game so you can react to things and it's much more natural that way. However, to get the best audio quality, you should record it separately, even though you do record it simultaneously. What I mean by that is that you shouldn't record the game audio with your microphone, but capture it directly from the game, while simultaneously recording the narration with your microphone. This means you need to make sure the microphone won't hear the game audio, so use headphones or just set the volume very low. Well, Fraps will record the game audio for you, so that's good, but it won't record your narration, so you need something else for that. I use Audacity, which I run on my laptop while I play the game on my desktop. You may also be able to record your narration on the same computer as the game. You should experiment as necessary. I prefer to do it on my laptop for ver uh, various reasons, but it isn't strictly necessary. You'll also, of course, need a microphone. I recommend using a headset. It doesn't need to be an expensive one. I use a very cheap one, actually. As long as the, as the audio quality is good enough, that's, that's all you really need. Okay, once you've recorded your uh, game, you're going to uh, edit the videos. At this point, you'll have the video files you recorded as well as the audio files for your narration. These are the source files for uh, MIST 5 created by Fraps. As you can see, there are a lot of them, much more than there are parts to Let's Play. And this is because Fraps will limit the file size to about 3.9 gigabytes. It just keeps them under 4 gigabytes. The reason it does this is because some applications cannot deal with files that are larger than 4 gigabytes. This means that each 10 minute part consists of multiple videos. In, uh, in my case, with this game, it's usually uh, 3 or 4. For this uh, tutorial, I will be encoding part 34 of Let's Play Myst 5 which is these three videos. As you can see, the total size is 11.2 gigabytes, and total length is only 10 minutes. So yeah, videos created by Fraps are very big. The final result we produce will be a lot smaller. To edit the videos, I will be using VirtualDub Mod. You can also use the regular VirtualDub, but I prefer VirtualDub Mod. It's just a little bit easier to use. We're going to open the video file, and the file we need um, is this one. You can open only one video file, but as I said earlier, we uh, need three of them. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to open the first part, the first segment, and then we go to File, Append Segment. Here you select the second part, and then repeat the procedure for the third part, which in this case is also the final one. Do this as many times as necessary. Now at this point I like to run through the entire video quickly just to check that I have the sequence right, that I didn't um, mistakenly add the uh, wrong parts together, and also to check the total length, which should be the same as what we saw in Explorer earlier. Now that we have all the video files, we need to combine the game audio with our narration. To do this, we need to first export the game audio from these video files. Go to Streams, Stream List. There should be only one stream, the uh, AVI audio stream. Choose Save Wave and save it as a WAV file with the part number of uh, the part this is for, in my case, 34. At this point you want to make sure that you select that you uh, deselect don't run this job now. This checkbox shouldn't be checked here. So let's save that and it will export the uh, audio. Shouldn't take too long. Now let's go to Audacity, which we will also use to uh, edit the audio. We'll go back to Fraps, or we'll go back to Explorer actually, <laughs> to um, but uh, to the Fraps directory, and find the uh, uh, audio file we just exported with the game audio. We'll j drag this file into uh, Fraps to open it there. Then we will do the same with the corresponding audio file with the narration. There we go, we have both the game audio and the narration. Now it's very important to uh, synchronize these two, make sure that the audio uh, isn't out of sync. Now in order to make sure that, uh, that I can properly synchronize them, I don't try to start video and audio recording at the same time because I found that was too hard to do. So what I usually do is I start audio recording first and then at the exact moment I start recording the game video, I say the word mark. Which we can see here at the beginning. Mark. So locate where you set mark on the timeline, then use the selection tool to cut off everything before that. I usually try to cut it off halfway the waveform for the word mark, which tends to work fine then delete that part of the audio. Then select everything until you actually start talking and silence that. There we go, silence audio. At this point you're basically done editing. Welcome back. All you need to do now is make sure that the relative volume levels are OK. Of course, that's the obvious answer, considering you can do that by just listening to some parts of the uh, audio. If you have any characters talking in the video, which I do in this case, here we can see that Escher is talking, you want to compare that volume. The distant isle. Very few have been here. You have. To the volume of your own speech. Just to make sure they are uh, similar. Then finally, make sure at the end that the narration audio track is shorter than the game audio track.